welcome to Broadway Theatricals and our production of William Minge's Picnic. Tonight's performance will be brought to you in three acts. There will be an intermission after act two. In case of emergency, you will just exit the same way that you came in. Please keep aisles clear during the performance as we do use the aisles during the performances. And please refrain from flash photography or videography of any type during the show. And now, without further ado, here's William H. Well, we 
you see him, tell him they're expecting a big crowd at the park this evening, so he'd better use his influences down at the city hall to get a ticket. And tell him to get one down by the river by a Dutch oven. Come on, come in bossy. Alan is a fine little bossy.
things are, they're rare in life. Yes, but what good are they? Well, pretty things like, like flowers, and sunsets, and rubies, and pretty girls too. You know that billboard's telling us life is good. Well, where do I come in? What do you mean? Maybe sometimes I get tired of just being looked at. Man, don't talk so selfish! I don't care if I'm being selfish, okay? It's just no good to be pretty. Hey, ma'am, my patrol, sir. What? Can I say since it's a hot enough day as it is and that maybe you'd object? How about am I little fire? No, I don't mind. Didn't think you would. He's got no shape. Just moves right in here whether you want him to or not. Why do you even like him from the moment I saw him? Do you? I don't like him or not like him. I just wonder what he's like. Oh, I know what he's like. Got 
much about it. Oh, it's always so hot this time. I always welcome a good cyclone, even if it blew everything away. Mm, not me. Just look at him lick that wash and it was so much tissue. <laughs> Well, the one that got me the screen test. But actually, she 
He wasn't a babe, really. <laughs> kind of beat up, but not bad. What are you doing here, Al? I was coming to see you. Yeah, why? Well, after Hollywood, I, I got a job up north in Nevada on, on a ranch. You know, Seymour, you would have been proud of me. I was, I was in bed every night at 10 o'clock, up every morning at 6. No liquor and no babes. I saved up 200 bucks. You came to pay me back. <laughs> See, I, I was gonna, but uh, I got rolled. Rolled? You? <laughs> and my uh, two babes. See, you see these babes with... See, I was hitchhiking down to Texas to try my luck, but I got as far as Phoenix when these two babes pull up in a big yellow convertible. And one of these days, she, she slams on the brake, bitch! And she hollers at me, get in, stud. <laughs> and so I got in. Seymour, it was crazy. They had a shaker full of martinis right there in the car. What are you boys talking about all the time? Millie and I asked to cake. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, any more work for me, man? No, no, you want to pay for breakfast. We're supposed to Place I can shower. We got a shower in the basement. Come on, I'll show you. He'll be there in a minute. So, we had a shaker full of martinis right there in the car. Yeah, in one of these games, she was smoking the weed. Gee, nothing like that ever happens to me. We'll go on with your story. See you more. You wouldn't believe it. The things these girls started doing to me, hmm. Pretty good looking. Why do you care? What makes the story more interesting? <laughs> Tell me what you did exactly. Yeah, I'll see more. You know me, I'm, I'm an agreeable guy. Sure. Yep. <laughs> the ladies, they took me up to a cabin up in the mountains, and I said, all right, girls, if I gotta pay for the ride, bro. They must have thought I was King Kong or something. You mean both of them? Sure. No. Then I said, all right, girls, this party's over. Let's get going. And then one of the days, the other day, I was smoking the weed. She stuck a gun in my back, and she said, this party's going on until we say it's over, Buck. <laughs> you thought she was Humphrey Bogart. What happened? Finally, I passed out. And when I woke up, the babes were gone, and so was my 200 bucks. I told the police, but they said my story was Wishful thinking. What do you think about that? Wishful thinking. Mm. I tell you what, see. Women are getting desperate. Well, that was that. And I thought to myself, what's a poor bastard like me ever gonna do? You, you don't sound to me like you had too much of a bad life. And I got thinking of you, Seymour. At school, how you always had things under control. Me? Yeah, yeah. You always listened to the lectures. You never cut classes. What are you smiling about? The one authentic hero that the university had. He ended. Ah, yeah, you know, big hero, you know, just between the goalposts. You know, you, you were the only guy in the whole fraternity that ever treated me like a human being. I know. All those other phonies always watching to see if I use the singular instead of the plural. You, you just imagine that. In a pig's eye, I did. Well, you think you're worse than anybody else. See, well, maybe I'll tell you someday. Your father drinks. So what it happens to the best of families? He died in jail, Seymour. Last time they scraped him up off the sidewalk. Gee, well, I'm awfully sorry to hear that. The old lady wouldn't even come across with the dough to pay for the funeral. They had to bury him in Popper's Road. What about the filling station? Well, the old man, he left us to his will, <laughs> The old lady wanted it so bad that she was going to have him declared insane. So I let her have it. Yeah. When did you get into town? Oh, this morning, I'm afraid. Well, why didn't you come see me right away? Well, I didn't want to walk into your palatial mansion looking like a bum. Well, that wouldn't have made any difference. Well, I wanted to pick up some change and buy a new shirt. I was hoping that, uh, that you and your old man between you could uh, fix me up with a job. What kind of job, Al? What kind of job you got? 
what would you have in mind? Well, uh, I was thinking of a, a nice office job. Where I had to wear a nice tie, nice long tie, and I have a sweet little secretary. And I had to talk on the phone about enterprises and things. You know, I, I always had a feeling that if given the chance, I could set the whole world on fire. Maybe you could have, but for the time of being, you've got to be content to work hard and be patient. Yeah. That's something i got to learn. i got to learn to be patient. Mrs. Potts, Sinclair is hiring new men, aren't they? Why, yes, Alan Perry just asked for a hundred men for the pipeline. How about them pipeline, Hal? Great, 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 beautiful. Wow, now where's that shower? Right in the middle of my forehead. 
should hope so. Good for you. Mm. I might have thought by now that somebody might have noticed my new dress. I was going to say something, kid. Remember that black satin crepe I had last year? Don't, Don't tell me. me. Mama remodeled it for me while I was at Columbia. I feel like I have a brand new outfit, but nobody said anything all afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's so chic. <laughs> Come on, Christine. Rosemary has a day. We'll be back for you in the morning. Don't be late. Girl, I gotta say, after one afternoon, I feel as if I've known you my whole life. I look upon you as an old friend already. Never could wear another fellow's clothes. A lot beefier through the shoulders. 
should have all my clothes tailor made. Uh, Hercules, you met Mrs. Owens? Oh, she's the mother. And I believe you met Mrs. Potts this morning. She's my best girl. <laughs> oh. Well, I made another lady Baltimore came. This nice lady, she took pity on me when I was practically starving. You see, on my way here, I ran into some bad luck. These characters robbed me of every cent that I had. You see, these two characters, the things they want to beat you up. Hell, this is uh, Miss Sydney. Miss Sydney teaches shorthand and typing at the local high school. I'm an old man school teacher. I have every respect for school teachers. It's a lot of hard work and not much pay. And uh, this is Mr. Bevins. Mr. Bevins is a friend of Miss Sydney. I run a shop down in Cherryville. Notions, novelties, and school supplies. You boys should come down sometimes and get a win. Well, we'll make our way down there as soon as we can fit into our schedule. Hey, Millie! You got the standard today, didn't you? Folks, you should see Millie this morning on the high diving board. She did a cat knife. It was absolutely beautiful. Now, I'll tell you what. Come on. What do you think I do with stone you under? Now, folks, I wouldn't admit this to many people, but. Millie does a jackknife almost as good as me. See, I was that the high diving champion on the West Coast, so I know what I'm talking about. Man, why don't you go along and get dressed? Go on upstairs and get beautiful for us. Mom, can I wear that new dress? I told you I made that dress for dances this fall. Now go on. Wait a minute. Where'd you get them boots? Well, I guess I got to apologize for the way I look. You see, uh, those characters I was telling you about, well. They made it off with all my clothes, too. These guys, I told the police that they said my son was a wish. But, you see, the reason I brought up the subject was because I didn't want you folks thinking. Yeah, I didn't want you folks thinking you were associating with a bum. <clears throat> now, what the hell's that use? Well, now, clothes don't make a man. Well, <clears throat> is your mother taken care of? Yes, Flo, I have a sitter for her. Well, we. See, man, my old man, he got me these boots when he died. That's all he left us, the boots. <laughs> he gave me these boots and he said, son, the man of the house needs a pair of boots because he's got to do a lot of kicking. But he knows to tell me, he to tell me his poem. Your wages all are spent. The landlord wants his rent. You go to your woman for solace and she fills you full of torment. <laughs> See, my old man, he would also say, he'd say, son, there comes a time in a man's life when all he's got to be proud of is the fact that he's a man. So, wear your boots so people know you're coming, and keep your fists doubled up so they know you mean business when you get there. <laughs> my old man, he's a corker. Hal's always so shy of people before he meets them, and you can't keep still. <laughs> yeah, I will. Hi. Hi. What business you in, son? Uh, well, I'm about to enter the oil business, sir. Uh, see, although my father was no aristocratic millionaire, he knew a lot of important people, a lot of big men in their own way. One of them wanted me to take a position down in Texas in the oil company. Dad so, and I have found a place for Hal on the pipeline. See, Mark, I think you ought to let me tell the story. After all, Hal, these people are interested in your life history. Yeah. So I, I guess I decided to start in from the bottom. There's a lot more important things to life than money. I guess I learned that much. But I do appreciate the opportunity, and it's all due in part to Seymour and his old father. Now, I think you have to want. It's a good business town, and I'm not go far. Sure, I intend to go far. You have a fella just coming to town? Got to be a good mix. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if you went out to the country club and learned how to play golf? Oh, you won't be able to afford that. Well, the bowling team's around again. <laughs> That's that young man's Bible study club down at Baptist Church. Match, are you still here? Well, excuse me, I'm going to pray. Hurry up, will you, Delilah? Thank you. 
You mean you can draw pictures? Sure. Mm -hmm. That's Miss Potts. That looks just like her. <laughs> I just love Miss Potts. When I go to heaven, I expect everyone to be just like her. Kid, you, you want to draw me? Try. <laughs> you said the job is mine once. They had me post bra right in front of the whole class. Ah, here we go. Okay. <laughs> well, I got plenty of these. I got plenty of these. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, why don't you try to look natural? Natural. Gee, that's hard. Oh, how? <laughs> look at that sunset. Pretty, isn't it? Oh, it's the most flaming sunset I ever see. You painted it in a picture, no one would believe it. Oh, it's like the daylight. Didn't want to end, isn't it? I don't know. It's like the daytime was going to put up a big scrap and set the world on fire to keep the nighttime from creeping on. I think I see what you mean there. You know, kid, there comes a time in a man's life when he's got to set that. He's got to quit rolling around like a pinball. No, Howard. If Miller's gonna be here, I don't think there ought to be any drinking. What was that? Nothing. Hey, kid, what did you do this afternoon? Read a book. You read a whole book in one afternoon? Sure. Hold still. Oh, yeah. I was son. What was it about? It's kind of hard to explain. Kind of how you feel when you read it. Warm inside and sad and amused all at the same time. Yeah, sure. I used to go with the girl once who read books. She joined the Book of the Month Club, uh, had her reading books all the time. See, she'd no sooner finish a book and then they'd send her another. Hmm. Where are you going, Howard? Be right back, honey. That's, that's me. <laughs> I sure do admire a person with artistic abilities. Can, can I keep it? Sure. I've read poetry, too. I've read poems I've never shown to a living soul. No kid. Alan, you put that bottle right where it is, right now. Did she say bottle? Huh. He's been down at the hotel buying bootleg whiskey from the good for nothing poetry. Hey, she didn't tell us what it is. Hi there! I want to put that away. Now, honey, Millie's not going to freak out if she sees somebody take a drink now, are you, Millie? Gosh, no. Well, what if somebody come by and tell the school board? I'd lose my job as quick as you can say Jack Robinson. Who <gasps> could have seen it? Everybody's down at the picnic. Come on. I don't care. Quick as against the law on the state, and a person should abide by the law. Isn't that what you say, young fella? Yeah, <laughs> a person ought to abide by the law. <laughs> No, Howard, I'm not touching a drop. One little drink for me. I said no, and I'll mean it. Honey, come on now, one drink. You should be ashamed of yourself, Howard. I don't see why. Well, I guess I know why you want me to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, honey, you know it's not that. I expect you to have a good time like the rest of us. School teachers got a right to live, right? Right. Well, now, you know that don't you tell any of the kids at school. Oh, what are you taking for? Uh, anyone coming? Coast is clear.
I tell myself, Howard, you can look all you want, but you can't touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> Gee, I'm glad Seymour's got a baby like her. Well, because he's my buddy. Seymour's a young pup. He'll be out there in school soon and forget all about it. I don't see how anyone can forget a girl like her. Ah. Ooh, look at her pretty lipstick all over that kisser. <laughs> You know, the good love makes a pretty girl like that. And it makes her for a reason. It's about time she finds out what the reasons for. You know, I found out that all the boys around here have been on the make for her ever since she was old enough to go to Sunday school. <laughs> if you're thinking about agonizing, I know some girls that have a hotel, no price. No, no, yeah, no lady, no lady. See, I, I never had paid for it. That's a good attitude. <laughs> Oh, I thought I was going to fight. It was just a piece of hard clothes. What you two talking about? The web, honey. Oh, I bet. Hey, Matt, want to charge admission? <laughs> Shoot. When I was a girl, I was just put a look in his shit. Sure you were. My father would call me showing off in front of the window. He'd have Tammy with a razor strap. Of course. Because he was a god here man. God.
I want to have a good time. Anything you say. I want to go for a drive. I want to go for a drive in the sunset. I want to go for a drive in the sunset. <laughs> Coming out on that porch looking like a pretty little dog. 
you're a real woman, aren't you? I don't want to be. You are. Lots of other places, but not so many Please marry me, Howard. 
Oh, I need time to think. Oh, God! <laughs> Why don't you go upstairs and get some sleep? And we'll I'll call you first thing. I can't sleep a week, not to lie here, Howard. Good night, Rosemary. Good night. Please call, man. I'll call. But please call, man. Don't worry, honey, I'll call. But, but please call. Take the car back from her to work and get a little sleep. You can't go back to Seymour's house now. No. I didn't even think of Seymour until just this second. I don't think I've ever spoken much about anything. Hey. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Will I see you tomorrow? No. I almost forgot I did. I started a new job this morning. I have to be at the dime store at nine. When are you through? Six. Will I see you? No. No. I guess I better be gone. I guess so. Baby, how are you going to handle your mother? I don't know. Don't, don't worry. Baby, you don't mind going with the guy who works in the pipeline. It's just that I'm, I'm a lot happier with a job like that. The one I can really handle, then I would be pretending to be a big shot. You can have just as much future as any other kind of job. Sure. Sure, a guy thinks he can get spoiled if he's some big football player. <laughs> thinks he can expect his whole life to be some big time. Gee, I'm glad I met you. I feel fine. <laughs> like I'm coming down through the clouds with no parachute. You know, landing on solid ground, and the whole world feels pretty good when I feel you. <laughs> hey, are you crying? Just, just a little. Why? I don't know. You almost got me doing it too. <laughs> Neither. I'm not unhappy. Just like, Baby, kiss me goodbye. Well, we just start things all over again. Well, kiss me goodbye anyway. You promise not to hold me? Yes, I promise. My hands are at my side, see? Now. Come around here again. Anyone seen Howard? Howard? He said in 
You didn't give us much notice. Oh, oh, didn't she tell you about Linda Sue Breckenridge? Oh, Linda Sue Breckenridge. Yes, she's the self-made woman. Yes, she and a doll girl. She and Mrs. Bendix had a fight. Mrs. Bendix wanted to charge her 20 cents for her orange juice in the morning. And we girls never pay more than 15 cents, the good girl. Never heard such a thing. I'm crazy. crazy. Irma, you tell Linda Sue to get in contact with Mrs. Owens. Thank you, Rosa. I think we should get going. I still have to pick up the wedding license. Oh, good. Well, goodbye, girls. <laughs>
months after he left the university, they still called us. Hal there. Does anyone know where Hal's gone? Voices sound so close to home. Hello, why don't you come up for dinner tonight? I'll make all your bacon, sweet potato pie, carrots, mashed potatoes. All be gone, Mrs. Holmes. Gone. Dad's been wanting me taking on a fishing trip up to Michigan. I've been stalling, but now I'm. Well, you'll be back before school, won't you? I'll be back Christmas. Christmas, Emily, go ahead and say goodbye to Madge. Madge is beautiful. Did, did I think I could spend the rest of my life just looking at her? Emily, just go in and say goodbye just one more time. N no, I'll, I'll stop by and I'll say hello. Anybody who stopped you, Flo? 